morning, everyone. That was great stuff. I think um, I'm going to start with uh, my uh, thought for uh, today, which uh, is that mobile is not an idea. And at the core of that is sort of the controversy that I think that Tom set up, which is we are at one bar out of five on what we could be doing. In, cre in the world of mobile creativity, that's even less. And so my proposal to all of you and to all of my clients is that mobile itself is not an idea. That ideas that transform your brands and your business are bigger than mobile. And at the core of that is that I don't want to limit my creativity to a four inch screen because you can't put 10 pounds of shit in a five pound bag on a four inch screen. You simply need more real estate. And that's not to say that there are not creative opportunities on four inch screens, but that the ideas are bigger than that. And at the core of that is this idea that the world is changing around us. And that's not something that any of us need to, uh, to be told. We all live that every day, that change is our new normal. And everything while we stay here that we think is holy and right will be different tomorrow. AOL uh, gets acquired by Verizon. Uh, Facebook puts beacons up in cities. Uh, WWDC introducing a new version of iOS today. Uh, Bruce Jenner becoming Caitlin. All of those in this sort of world of change affect what we do. And they mean that if we make any technology or mobile itself as our idea, that we do it at our own peril. So you think about the dinosaurs. They didn't see the asteroid coming, and thus they're taking a dirt nap. The same is true for all of us if we're not constantly changing and thinking about bigger than what technology is sitting in front of us today, and we're not trying to unlock value from our brands and our, um, and our competition. One company always comes to mind when we think about this, who thought mobile was an idea and that's BlackBerry. BlackBerry thought the idea of mobile and the idea of messaging was big enough to change the world. And they didn't evolve, they didn't pioneer, and now they're essentially dead. And I think about that because I work at this company that was founded by this guy 150 years ago, um, 11,000 people in uh, you know, 100 countries. If we're not pioneering as a, as a company, then we suffer the same fates, uh, fate as BlackBerry. And so that's the spirit that sort of drives me and all of us at J. Walter Thompson every day. It's the idea of how do we disrupt what's going on in the marketplace? For 150 years, we've been trying to think about ways to fight for people's attention. It started in newspaper, it went to radio, it went to television, it went to digital, and mobile is just one piece of a large puzzle of how we fight every day to get attention for the brands that we work on. And so I'm going to talk about a bunch of things today that I think are great ideas that happen to live in mobile. They're not mobile ideas. And the difference is that the idea started as a larger uh, problem to solve. And I'm going to talk about each one of those. Um, I was talking with the guys here at uh, Mobilenomics, and they said, beyond showing us cases, can you talk to us about what are the challenges to getting those things in the marketplace? I know so many of you have great ideas, have great technologies, and are frustrated by the fact that we sit, um, as Tom said, in that one bar versus five bar world. And so let me jump into some ideas. At the core of proposing that mobile is not an idea is also comes from the idea that everything in our lives are mobile. And that goes beyond the fact that our cars are mobile and our refrigerators are connected. It's a bigger thought, which is that every product, that everything that we have, that every piece of communication that we touch is mobile. And it's bigger than the idea that just um, more 18 to 29-year-olds are, um, are watching uh, videos on, video on YouTube every day than are watching any cable network. It's bigger than the fact that mobile has overtaken um, search on desktop. It's that every single thing that we make has the opportunity to be mobile. And if we think about that, 
suddenly the ideas become bigger. Suddenly they become bigger uh, than the idea of mobile itself. So the first brand I'm going to talk to you about couldn't be less mobile on the surface, which is Band-Aid. It's an adhesive strip that is somehow magical to every single child in the world. There's nothing mobile about it, and yet we try to think about how do we fight in a world where um, Walmart will give you 90, uh, 100 of these adhesive strips for 99 cents, how do we make Band-Aid differentiate itself in that marketplace? And at the core of that was this idea of thinking about taking each one of those four billion Band-Aids that are sold every year and turning them in to a way to entertain away the hurt. So I'm going to play that for you now. And my mom was like, put two band-aids on it because I think that will help. And I was like, two band-aids, awesome. When I have it to make, I put a band-aid on my belly button. First, put on your Band-Aid brand Muppets bandage. Then scan your bandage with your iPhone or iPad. Whoop! Hi-ho! Kermit the Frog here, feeling blue, not for law. Then you're ready to start the show. Why are you can there even so swing many Kermit. songs about rainbows? <laughs> My favorite Muppet is Miss Piggy because she's so girly. Miss Piggy wants you to take a picture. No, I'm not feeling well. Well, I'll take care of that. It's time to take a picture of me. Gosh, a, does a wacky stunt. He came out of the rocket and then then he got stuck on the glass. I'm shaking Gonzo. That's Band-Aid Magic Vision, and one of the th points uh, that always comes up when I show this work is, how in the world did you sell that? And at the heart of it is this idea that I had a co-conspirator on the other side, that um, I had a client who wanted to try to figure out how to do something that had never before been done before. And I think that's at the core of starting the discussion with trying to get people to do bigger things in the creative space of mobile, which is that sometimes what you want doesn't exist. It's the unicorn in the world of technology. And the question is, how do you create that unicorn together with um, your partners in a way that allows people to say yes when the initial re gut reaction is no? And what we did here is we worked as a very small group for almost nine months to sort of crack this. Because when we first came up with this idea with the folks at Johnson & Johnson, with the folks at Disney, of unlocking this idea of something magical that happens for each one of those four billion Band-Aids that were sold, the technology wasn't mature enough. The prototype that we first created didn't work. And we kept working to refine it. And by the time we showed it to kids and showed it to senior management and asked them to invest in them, they were holding this thing with a fascination that was undeniable. And that forced them to say yes. It was impossible to say no to. And so I would challenge each one of you to find these co-conspirators around and cr try to work in small groups. Try to make the magic happen yourselves and then spread it out. It's one way to make something happen that seems uh, impossible at the time. Create your unicorn. Now, another brand that thought about something uh, that wasn't at all mobile was, uh, was Royal Caribbean. So Royal Caribbean um, is constantly launching big, beautiful new ships. 
And there is a thing about these ships that I think is obvious anytime you see one. They're hideously expensive. And so to launch a ship that has no one on it is a very dangerous proposition. And so what they do to try to sell these ships is they create brochures. And it was something that has worked um, to get a brochure for a new cruise ship um, for years and years. But there was an interesting challenge that was happening, which is there was a number of new companies launching hideously expensive new, cr new cruise ships. How were they going to launch theirs full from the day that it launched? And how were we going to create uh, work to sell that ship before the ship was even there? It hadn't even been built. And um, this is a little story of how we did that for them. After houses and cars, Vacations are the most expensive thing families spend money on. But how do you convince people to book a cruise vacation on a ship that's still being built? You create the first ever ship brochure that comes to life and lets you experience the ship without ever setting sail. To showcase Royal Caribbean's upcoming Quantum of the Seas, we created a 3D model of the entire ship down to the most minute detail. Using our app, prospective cruisers could literally put themselves in the middle of everything the ship will have in store for them. Curious about the first bumper car rink at sea? Here you go! Wondering what it's like to skydive in the middle of the ocean? Wonder no more! And just how spectacular are the views from the ship's North Star? Exactly this spectacular. We even went so far as to show how the ship's lounge transforms from day to night. And to make it easy for everyone to spread the word about just how much excitement awaits them on Quantum, we made the experience shareable. For the first time ever, prospective cruisers will know exactly what they're getting for their hard-earned money without ever having to set foot on board. Bon voyage. So that's Royal. This was a first for the cruise industry. But I think there's a couple of interesting lessons that, that I learned from this. Um, uh, one of it is this idea couldn't live in a foreign screen alone. The idea is how do you create the fascination and the wow of this ship? And the brochure is still an important part of that. And so a client was quite comfortable with this brochure and what had happened over many years of success with that. And it wasn't that huge of a leap to try something different, particularly for a company that's as progressive as they were. And so um, I think one of the interesting things in thinking about mobile not being ideas is thinking about how the idea itself of what you want to create goes bigger than that screen. When you think about all of the products from Coke cans to RB sandwiches to U-Haul trucks that are sort of in the room here today, those are things that all have the ability to have a component that comes to life for the clients um, that has a connection with them. Um, one of the other things that I think I've learned that's quite a powerful thing, and I would say if there's one reason that I'm here in this room today, is because there's so many smart people here. And at the core of success, um, I find, in so many of these, is finding a partner in crime. What brands share your values? What partners have technology that you don't know about? Who else is trying to do something pioneering in the space? Um, the example that I want to show is what I think is a wildly pioneering partnership, which was KitKat's sponsorship of, um, of the Android operating system. It took the largest, uh, most ubiquitous mobile operating system in the world and merged it with the most popular um, candy in the world. And that was about taking the classic idea that KitKat has been the champion of the break for decades and bringing that to life in a new place where they could champion what's today's break, which is those 150 times a day we spend with our phones. Most great ideas are created for the benefit of one brand. This is an idea designed for two. One of the world's leading confectionery brands, KitKat, and the world's most popular mobile operating system, Android. Over at Nestle, KitKat was fast building its presence on the internet where we all tend to have a break and a Kit Kat these days. Meanwhile, the Android team was releasing a new version of the platform. Previous versions were named after desserts, starting with each letter of the alphabet. 
and the team needed a name beginning with K. So for this match made in heaven, we created Android KitKat, the first mobile operating system named after a brand. The idea needed to work for both brands operating in very different categories, chocolate and technology. So we created a simple iconic image to sum up the partnership. We used the image as a giant installation at Android's headquarters. This was the basis for a photo that launched the new idea with just one single tweet from the Android team, swiftly followed by one more infectious retweet from KitKat. And in literally four minutes, the world's media had taken our icon global, so far delivering a record 4.96 billion Twitter impressions. The idea then manifested itself on the KitKat packaging in 19 countries, transforming the world of chocolate into a media for Android, and in the new Android operating system itself as a hidden Easter egg for fans to discover. KitKat then also appeared in point of sale in mobile phone stores, a brand new media for confectionery advertising. We even manufactured the iconic image for real as edible media for opinion formers to enjoy and publicize. The creation of Android KitKat made this the single most talked about version launch of all time, generating 10 times more traffic to Android.com. It also helped KitKat cement its place at the heart of the modern mobile break. And all this without Android or KitKat paying each other a single cent. They just needed one great idea and two great partners. So I, I love that idea, and I love that the idea is bigger than what is a whole new way to think about sponsorship. And this is proof here, is, which is the idea that we need to ditch the brakes in our marketing, and in this always-on world, having something that's bigger than any technology makes magic possible. How many people in the room remember the Super Bowl uh, tweet with the uh, Oreo? Everybody. At the time, it was the most tweeted um, ad in history. This was the one that beat that. We don't bend, we break, and it was during Bengate for the iPhone uh, 6 Plus. It was an idea that was about building on something else, which is that KitKat was the champion of the break and it had people's attention. This, to me, is a mobile idea. Another thought of thinking about how work needs to come to life to become bigger than technology, bigger than mobile itself, is that the heart is way more important than the eyeball. And I think for, so, for too long, we're using the same ways to judge the success in digital and particularly in mobile that we've been using to judge television, radio, and print for 100 years. And that's that the eyeballs are most important. I'd like to suggest something different, which is if you put the heart first, the eyeballs will follow. This next case is a particularly powerful example of that, which is it questions whether can you use uh, mobile and social media to erase the stigma of mental illness. Again, I would argue this idea is bigger than any of the technology or the idea of mobile that you'll see here, yet it wouldn't have been possible without it. And it was all possible because it put putting the hearts of people before putting the number of eyeballs of people that would touch this. Everybody talks about the stigma attached with mental health and it's real. It's really real. Too many Americans who struggle with mental health illnesses are still suffering in silence rather than seeking help. It's the comments that you're crazy. That's what, that's what keeps you from getting help. That's what makes you hold it in and hide it. Bottom line, I got a call. And, and my brother killed himself. Hey guys, I just want to let you all know that uh, if anyone is ever going through something, I'm here to listen. Three simple words can make a difference. My name is Kenetio Canny, and I will listen. I will listen. It's about listening to people. Everyone can make a difference. I'm Mariel Hemingway. I will listen. I will listen. We will listen. I'm here to listen to you, to my friends, to my family, to anyone that needs to be listened to. Bunch 
bunch of people who were more committed to putting my life back together than I was, I'm here today. My name is JD. You bet. I will listen. So it's quite a powerful story there that um, this campaign has increased peer-to-peer um, -peer counseling by 30 percent. Um, that uh, Scientific American wrote an article about how Iowa Listen is, um, has a measurable effect on lowering the stigma of mental illness in America. But uh, um, at the core of it is, for me, in the context of what we're talking about, is, is that the content is so powerful. And while mobile becomes the conduit to bring in that content to people, that the content came first. And I think as we think about uh, a world where we'll have a lot of discussions over the next two days about this, which is that everything about mobile is about location is true because there's nothing more powerful. There's no greater gift than we can give our consumers or a brand can give us as consumers than to give us something at the moment that we need it but at the core of that is that content has got to be as important as context. And I think a lot of the discussion, as it currently stands in, in Tom's uh, one bar world that he says, is that there's so much focus on um, the power of location-based marketing and probably not enough love put into the content that goes into that. And one of the examples I was gonna show for this um, comes from uh, an allergy brand that we have, and this is about making um, content, for me, as important as the context of where you're suffering. It's no secret that you have allergies, but you probably have no idea what you're allergic to. Introducing the Zyrtec Allergy Cast app, the first and only app that helps you learn what you're allergic to. The app triangulates live pollen data, live weather data, and real-time info from you to determine what exactly has you sneezing and gouging your eyes out. Pollen and weather data is collected from 10,000 calibrated stations throughout the United States. Even wind speed and humidity are taken into account. Then the magic happens. Over time, it learns how your allergies make you feel, what specific symptoms are triggered by pollen, and what you're allergic to. On rough days, you'll get an alert in the morning. And to keep you coming back, we've gamified the whole experience with rewards, daily prizes, and charms. AllergyCast is already the number one allergy app on iPhone and Android, and in the top 25 for all weather apps. Our users are so addicted they spend over 15 minutes a month with it. Zyrtec AllergyCast. It's like having an allergist, a weatherman, and a psychic in your pocket. I think one of the things that's really interesting about this, uh, um, yes, this person is learning that maybe putting honey on his face is not a good idea. Um, it, there's now a half a million people um, using the Zyrtec Allergy Cast. Um, our core users use it every single day. We've measured that there is a 19% lift of purchase intent from the people using that, which means that content that we're giving them is a true gift. And it goes beyond the context of that. So we do all sorts of great um, uh, mobile uh, display advertising that drives people to the app. But at the core is the content that you get once you go there. And I think when you think about this sort of evolving world of content first, you think about Android Lollipop, you think about um, where iOS 8 went and where we're going to see more of it, I think, today in iOS 9, you think of where content is coming on our wrist, it's so important to think about what that is. What is that gift we're going to give them? Not just where we're going to give it. Um, not just where we're going to give it to them. Um, and it's an iterative process um, that's gone. We're now in our fourth version of the uh, Zyrtec Allergy Cast. I'm going to give you a sneak peek um, of one last thing before I go, and that's um, another launch and learn experiment that we're doing with uh, with Johnson and Johnson. And this is hoping to help people uh, figure out the age-old question of what a sniffle is: is it a cold? Is it a flu? Is it an allergy? And we call it Healthy Day. Um, we uh, we gave a preview of this at Internet Week, and it should be hitting the App Store this afternoon. So you'll be one of the first people on Earth to see it. 
When you don't feel well, you search for answers, and the results can make you feel worse. You don't know who to trust, but that's not true for everything. There are apps that let you know when it'll rain, or help you outsmart afternoon traffic. Turn left. What if you could outsmart cold, flu, and allergies? Introducing Healthy Day from J&J, &J, the first and only app that makes staying on top of your health as easy as staying on top of the weather. Using a patent-pending algorithm, Healthy Day gathers data from the same trusted sources that doctors and hospitals use, then cross-references it with local crowdsourced data to determine what's trending nearby. It lets you see if other people in your neighborhood are sick and what they have. And when you're feeling great, it lets you see what's going around and sends real-time alerts to help you know what to watch out for. But that's just the beginning. It also brings you quick 30-second solutions for feeling better because searching for answers isn't good for your health. Healthy Day from J&J, &J, the smartest way to outsmart the sniffles. So I hope you guys will all try that out so that we can help uh, uh, make it stronger and smarter. And, um, and I'll just sort of wrap up by sort of just going over a couple of the thoughts that I want to throw out because I'm really looking forward to getting back to the conversations with all of you. Um, Mobile is not an idea. I think the more that we think like that, the bigger and better that uh, the ideas will be, the more creative and rewarding they will be for consumers. Um, that thinking about everything as mobile, that every single product that we make, that every single thing that we touch has the opportunity to have mobile being a part of that. Um, and when we think about creating better work, that we make hearts more important than eyeballs, that we find partners in crime like the people in the room here, um, that we make content equal to context, and that we launch and learn, that we not try to launch bloatware, that we not try to make it perfect, that we treat everything that we do like a learning experience. Um, thanks for having me, and I look forward to spending the next two days with all of you.